I'm Daniela Padeu. I'm a senior researcher at the Centre for Transport and Society at the University of West of England, Bristol. And uh, I, I'm an engineer by, I actually work on um, societal and uh, um, users aspects uh, related to the transport systems and transport services. And my expertise is in freight. Uh, so my project, um, the decarbonate project, so the Code Zero project is all focused on the decarbonization of urban freight. And um, the key point is uh, co-creation and co-design with freight stakeholders. So I try to engage freight stakeholders and uh, ask for them their help in shaping uh, the future of urban freight, trying to make it more sustainable. What would you say is, the, what was the most surprising thing that you found out in the project? So when I, did my reviews for the decarbonization consultancy. So before I started the project, I found a lot of materials towards new technologies and uh, clean technologies for decarbonization. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was a bit biased about thinking that those solutions are the solutions to, to reach decarbonization at zero in 20, by 2050. But then when I organized the, the workshops, Yes, of course, people were quite happy um, to adopt, to, to buy electric vehicles, not to buy, but to use electric vehicles and to uh, encourage people to use more sustainable um, technologies. But the main thing, the key thing that they found and we found together because it was like a very collaborative project is that actually operational change, uh, organizational change, sorry, and the behavior change are the key words and key drivers for freight decarbonization. So if you have um, electric vehicles and you use them, but then um, you don't really optimize your load or you don't talk to the, the other competitors in order to uh, optimize the overall network in an urban area, then the system doesn't really work. And if your end consumers might be like very environmentally friendly, they might order organic food, uh, but they want their deliveries to be, their products to be, to be delivered on the next day or the same day. It means that they are actually not aware of the amount of carbon and emissions they're producing when they order something, some products. So we found, and it was quite interesting, that actually behavior change and organizational change, so collaboration among freight stakeholders, um, are the key, uh, uh, might be more powerful than clean, cleaner and new, and new technologies. Thank that. That's really interesting um, finding, yeah. And I suppose in some ways that came out of having all the different stakeholders from all the different parts of the system in, in a room together at the same time, or or online, I guess, because we were in yes. but yeah, yeah. I found the North like very different from the other regions I, I've been working in um, because it's much more independent in theory, but in practice, they still think they need to get like a, national, a, a more um, general national direction before being able to really making any decisions towards measures and, and um, uh, policies towards free decarbonization. So I think there is a lot of enthusiasm in the North uh, about being good, uh, being like a good model for the rest of the UK, which is good also because especially for freight, one third of the freight coming to the UK is in the North. Uh, but the population is all in the south, so it's a bit weird. So geographically, the north is quite exposed to freight movements, uh, not only urban movements, but also like uh, extra urban, like long haul movements. And another thing that is very, very uh, nice in the north is that um, the, the main cities are uh, like very close to each other. So when we think of urban freight, we usually try to design the urban environment as a system with the different components. But in this case, being the three cities, very three, four major cities, very close, 
I was thinking that it would be very convenient to think of the system as like a macro system made by different cities. And usually, for example, rail freight uh, is not really used for urban movements because it's not convenient in terms of costs. But if we think of this as a macro system, it could be actually be used um, and uh, that would reduce costs and would make a solution that is otherwise not feasible, actually a good solution and also is very good for decarbonization. So reducing road vehicles to the number of road vehicles to, to encourage uh, rail. Um, so I think that either, I mean, from one side, the geographical uh, characterization of the north can make it like a unique place um, with many advantages in terms of um, possible solutions, uh, possible decarbonization solutions, um, and also the enthusiasm um, that I found in the North about being there, um, working together to achieve something that could be then replicated, transferred more than replicated, transferred to other regions. Uh, th that was quite nice to see and also very interesting. So uh, the last mile, so within the overall supply chain, the last mile is the most expensive and least efficient part mm -hmm. because it's an urban area, because of congestion, because many trips are uh, like unsuccessful. You know, when you order something online and you're not at home, they need to go back again the day after. So you're generating actually two to four trips if we include the return um, for, for each one. So it's quite hard to um, reduce costs so uh, from last mile deliveries. And they are also the most impactful ones uh, in terms of carbon emissions because of the condition of the traffic and because they are in urban areas, so the impact on public health is worse mm -hmm. um, because there are people in urban areas. So I think it, it, it is quite challenging to balance um, costs in terms of like optimization of the system, uh, the urban system, so urban, last, uh, urban or last mile deliveries and uh, reducing carbon emissions. Um, and if you want to reduce carbon emissions from last mile deliveries, you could reduce the number of vehicles in an area. So using collaborative schemes, consolidation centers, micro consolidation centers, or you can use environmentally friendly vehicles. But in both cases, you need to invest. Mm. It, it costs more. Uh, so bigger players can do that. Uh, bigger companies can do that, can afford that smaller uh, can't. So how, how, how does it work? Are bigger companies paying, you know, the difference uh, um, and uh, to asking like smaller operators to perform the last mile for them, but the bigger companies invest, mm. make, make the investments or are policymakers encouraging smaller operator to, to do more sustainable deliveries, um, providing uh, them with with the findings, fundings, sorry, yeah. or sub financial support.